What's Pimp Chimpin' Gamers? Today I was sitting on my couch reading The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, and I thought to myself, you know, man, doesn't everyone just want to hear my TF2 weapon balance changes? So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna be presenting my ideas for some excellent fixes for some of TF2's worst weapons. Now I have these segregated by class, and we're gonna start off with the Scout. Now the first weapon we're gonna talk about is the Baby Faces Blaster. Usually a real piece of shit so I, I kind of fixed it. The biggest issue with this thing is that the speed lessening is a, a problem uh, when you want to go fast because that's what Scout does. You know, being punished for double jumping is kind of stupid in my opinion. So I made it that on hit your enemy bleeds for 8 whole seconds. But there's a minus 10% movement speed on wear and a minus 34% clip size. I'm sure the bleed scouts are going to have a freaking field day with this one. Next up we've got the sun on a stick. Generally known for being an unusable piece of shit, so I gave it a plus 15% movement speed while on fire, and it mini crits burning players, you get minus 25% secondary ammo, and plus 100% damage from sharpened volcano fragment. I thought if you're on fire it would be kind of cool if you could move a little bit faster as scout, you know, being able to move fast is cool and all, but you could move even faster, that'd, that'd, that'd be pretty lit also. Be Minus 25% secondary ammo is just kind of a fuck you to anyone who equips it. And uh, plus 100% damage from the sharpened volcano fragment. That one, I just thought it would be kind of cute to have an interaction between these two weapons where the scout gets fucked over every single time. Now we're moving on to Soldier and his Righteous Bison. Mostly, the, the stance has stayed the same. You know, it does not require ammo. Projectiles penetrate enemy targets. All the shit you've seen before. Projectiles can't be reflected. But I gave it a plus 70% projectile speed. Now, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50 with everyone watching here. I don't really know what this means. I, I don't really know how fast this thing is in game, and I'm not gonna try and figure out how to test it out. Uh, so, I, I assume this is faster than the base projectile by a significant amount, because the current projectile is fucking unusable. Uh, I also gave it this silly little, silly little thing that projectiles hurt friendly buildings. Oh, and it also gives you a plus 20 25% explosive damage vulnerability on, on wear, so uh, yeah, it also does that, which is pretty cool. It's pretty balanced, I think. Fair and balanced uh, for competitive play. I do, I do believe, yes sir, I do believe the Righteous Bison is set and ready for competitive play. I do, yes I do, and you can you can quote me on that. Next up we've got the Base Jumper. Uh, this one is for Soldier and Demo. I actually don't have any Demo weapons on here because I think uh, I think his kit's actually uh, like all around pretty good. Except for the Base Jumper. Uh, I completely changed how it works. So upon deploying it, instead of being a parachute, it fills with bricks to make you instantly fall to the ground, and if you manage to land on someone's head, you, my friend, are granted 15 minutes of crits. Alright, I think that's it for Soldier, uh, onto Pyro. Now, this one was always coming, we all knew it had to be done, because this is really the sore thumb in Pyro's arsenal. I think the Phlogistonator needed something to, you know, help it stand out from the crowd a little bit and make it different. So now, after you get all of your oomph crits and stuff, these oomph crits, mini crit during afterburn, you know, so as, as you're in that super powered ultra state, you know, god damn it, they slip away, but they're on fire, but they're not taking critical hit fire damage. Urgh, what a shame. And I was tired. I wanted to make Pyro more viable because as we all know, Pyro is the weakest class in the game and he can barely defend himself most of the time. So I, I think this is really something that, that's needed for the flog, especially because I'm also keeping the no air blast and no random crits. Yeah, that's that's really the only change I made. I just I just wanted to I wanted to buff the phlogistonator a little bit. Uh, erm, don't hit me guys. It's I was just feeling a little goofy. Alright, next up, another one that just had to be tackled ASAP is the gas passer. Basically all I did was reduce the time and damage needed and that's kind of it. I reduced 60 seconds to 20 and 750 damage to 350. Uh, this might not be balanced but I I don't really care. Anyways on the heavy we've got the buffalo steak sandwich. This item is consumed two times faster than normal and there is a 30-70% chance that heavy dies of salmonella poisoning or increased movement speed and melee crit for 16 seconds respectively. You can still share this this thing. However, it is also a gamble because it features the exact same 30-70 chance, except instead of giving them crits for the melees, it would heal them like a medium health kit would, uh, or it kills them. 
That's what I believe the buffalo steak sandwich could be. Onto the eviction notice. This thing also, it's sort of a, a real stinky piece of shit. I have never seen this thing be used, so I wanted to change that. Now we're looking at a plus 40% faster firing speed. Bleed for 8 seconds. You get a plus 7% faster movement speed on wear. So you just get a passive 7% movement speed buff. You get no random crits, no air blast, and it marks your healer for death while it's active. Alright, so the engineer has an item that has been far too powerful for far too long. And we all know it's the Wrangler, so here we go. You can still take control of your sentry, have all that wild aimbot and all the aim assist and all that. It's all, it's all for you. You can still have it. And that's cool, but I have a couple neat little changes to help balance out this weapon. First off, the sentries are disabled for 10 seconds and de-level after becoming unwrangled. Uh, you get a plus 13% sentry rocket firing speed, a minus 25% maximum health on wear, and the wear cannot collect metal from dispensers. And that is what I believe is a completely fair and balanced change to the Wrangler and I think should be added to the game. Next up we've got the Vaccinator, you goddamn freaking Vax medics. I'm so fucking tired of like dealing with any of you so i kept it the exact same uh although i did change the uber charge rate to 69 percent because they were really blue balling all of us with that but other than that i made it so that upon uber charge the user is banned from the game and their inventory is deleted anyways sniper we're moving to the classic uh i love this thing i mean i, I think it's perfect the way it is but for some reason people think it's stupid so i made it so that headshots uh mini crit when not fully charged and that's it. That's the only, that's the only, uh, that's the only change. Razorback. Uh, this blocks a single backstab attempt just like, uh, you know, it always does. But instead of pseudo stunning the spy, it causes 8 seconds of bleed damage. Plus, you also get a 15% headshot vulnerability. Next up is the Tribalman's Shiv. On hit, bleed for 2 minutes. Carries over after respawn. Minus 70% damage penalty and plus 23% flinch vulnerability on wearer. I feel like this is, this should be a lot of fun. Uh, excellent counterplay to spies, you know, how the matchup between spies and, and uh, snipers just isn't exactly the most fair. I feel like the Tribalman's Shiv can finally shine like, like it has, like it was always meant to. One of the last class here, Spy. And of course, they're going to be changing the Enforcer a little bit. Now, Erm, um, don't send rockets to my house, but the Enforcer now gives you one guaranteed critical hit for each disguise. The attack still pierce damage resistance effects bonuses. There's also a 70% slower firing speed and a plus 36% reload time. I feel like this would make the Enforcer a lot more fair and balanced in play, and I, I think you would really switch up the meta a little bit, you know, and switch up every game, making it feel fresh and new. Um, one thing that I was considering before ultimately landing on the guaranteed crits was is around eight seconds of bleed damage, but ultimately I didn't go with that one because I thought it didn't really fit the weapon too well. Uh, so this is what I believe the enforcer should be. So the last weapon here we've got is the Eurotunnel Reward. Uh, I am not a huge fan of this weapon. A an upcoming video, I, I can't really tell you when it'll come out because I don't fucking know. But there is one in the works that involves this this knife. Man, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm gonna peek atop the fourth wall here and tell you guys a little secret. This video is not real. I don't care about any of these balances. They're all fucking crazy and wild. This is the only one that I actually care about. The, the only one that I want to see in the game. Because I like this knife on a, on a fundamental level. But it's held back so much by its downsides that I, I, I just don't want... I, I don't want him there. And you can you can scream and whine and cry at me all you want that this this makes the knife unbalanced and stuff. And maybe you're a hundred percent right and I'm willing to admit that. But I want the only downside to be a plus fifteen percent cloak drain rate. Everything else stays the same. I want to use this knife and not want to kill. So, what did you think of all my balance changes? Did you hate them? Did you like them? You know, how'd it go? You know, what what are we thinking, boys? What are we thinking? You know, group hug in the shower or a, or a, or a no protest outside of uh, any unspecified building? Were these balance changes any good? Uh, if they weren't, be sure to let me know. If they were really good, also be sure to let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like. That was a really sad one. I'm so sorry I had to hear that. Yeah, I think that's everything I had to say. So, uh, yeah, see ya. So I made it that on hit, your enemy bleeds for eight whole seconds.
How that would go? <laughs> I just, I just imagine <laughs> you try to, you try to hit someone with this, and then you, you just be like one pellet misses, and, and just, <laughs> and it just hits like a stray medic, and then he starts bleeding for eight seconds. <laughs> 